Welcome to today's Bible study. We're going to be um, discussing a question, a very difficult question that comes from the book of Romans chapter 8. And we're going to read Romans chapter 8, verse 29 and 30. Uh, I'm going to read it and just keep it in your margins. Uh, and as always, I'm going to ask you to read other, other passages. So keep your Bibles ready. Um, difficult question. Romans 8, 29, 30 says, For those who God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters, and those predestined, he also called, and those he called, he also justified, those he justified, he also glorified. I'm going to stop there. And the question says, um, so does this mean God has decided who... Are going to be his children so that is the question that uh, we received this week does this mean does this passage mean that god has already decided who is going to be his son his daughter there's nothing we can do um so romans 8 29 30 and remember this is a, a Difficult question because uh, denominations are divided because of this. Churches will be divided because of these sort of questions. Uh, Christians will argue with one another because of this question. But we're not here to argue. We're not here to impose anything. We're just here to ask the Holy Spirit to help us um, to um, understand his word. And above all things, mm -hmm. after we finish this Bible study today, you are going to be 100% sure, even more than before, that you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, that uh, that you um, are planted in him, that you are part of the body of Christ, and that God um, will do everything he has promised for your life. Is that a good place for you to say amen? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You are saved. Saved. Amen. Okay, so Romans 8, 29, 30. Does this mean that God has decided who's going to be his children, who's going to hell to heaven? Uh, let's 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 unpack that. We're going to start with verse 29. For those he knew, so God knew them. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna paste. I'm gonna put it here in the in the chat. So first of all, all the steps that we see here that God does, all the the things. So God, number one, we're gonna see five things in this passage. The first thing that we can see here is that God knew you and me before we were e even in this, in this world. God knew. He says here in verse 29, for those who God foreknew. So that's the first step here. Now, can you tell me some of the qualities that God has? Can you paste in the chat um, right now some of the the, the qualities that God has. I'm going to give you one, for example. He's almighty. I'm going to put it here. Almighty, that's, that's a quality, right? Can you, can you paste another one or put another one? Omniscient. That is amazing. Yeah. Can you... Sovereign, yeah. Whoa, you're in the same spirit. All <laughs> powerful. All powerful, sovereign. Another one. Keep them coming. Yeah, he's a king of kings, so he reigns, he rules over everything. Good. Thank you, Mariela. Anything else? All the quality that God has. Yeah, almighty, he can do all things. I see. All-knowing, yeah, that's om uh, omniscient. Is the, is the same one. We're very good, Vijay. Thank you so much. Omnipresent. Very good one. Yeah, yeah. So, doctor may come in and... In, in, um, Loving kindness. Yeah, he's loving. Excellent. So we're going to stop there. Amazing. You see all the, the qualities, some of the qualities that God has. And um, you place almighty, all-knowing, omnipresent. He's everywhere. All-powerful. He's a healer. All-sufficient one. Loving. Why don't we focus now, since we're talking about 
God knowing everything, why don't we focus on that one that says omniscient? Omniscient. So God says here that he knew everyone before we were even in this world. Anybody wants to read Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, please? Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. And then when you have it, just open your microphone. Because all these qualities that God has are putting him way beyond our understanding and, and, and our reach. He is beyond what you could ever think or imagine. And if he knows everything, he makes decisions in an absolutely different way. Jeremiah 1, 5. Who wants to read that one? Ready? The words of Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, one of the priests at Anato, the territory of Benjamin. Oh, I gave you verse one. You wanted verse five. Before I formed you, in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Sue. So please keep that Bible verse in your margins and underline the word. He knew. I knew you. Even before you were born, I knew you. You see, so these are the, the five steps that we're going to see here in this passage. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. God already knew him. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. So you see, when, when God, um, before choosing, before justifying, before glorifying, before all the things that you see in this passage, you see that God knew you because he's all-knowing. That plays him and puts him in a very different perspective. He doesn't see things just like you see them. It's not like when we play football and, and uh, if Rami knew who the best players are, he would choose the best team. But he doesn't. He, ha he has a limited knowledge about things and, 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 and God is in a different perspective there. He's in a different position as God. He knows everything and he knew you and me. He knew Jeremiah, the Bible says, even before he was born. So if he knew everything that Jeremiah was going to do, the Bible doesn't say here that he forced Jeremiah to do things, but he knew everything that Jeremiah will do in his life. And he said, you know what? There's a heart there that will remain in my presence. And I'm going to, now that I knew you, even before you were born, I know that I'm going to predestine you to do the task that I'm going to ask you to do. So you see, it starts there. God knew what Jeremiah will do. God knew, and, and, and it's, not like, it's not like God created a robot in Jeremiah or in you and me, but he knew things even before they happened because he's omniscient. And he said, I'm going to make you a prophet for the nations. That's Jeremiah 1.5. That's one of the most amazing Bible verses. Uh, the Bible says that God knew Jeremiah in the past, even before he was born. Uh, who wants to read Psalm 139 uh, verse 1? I'm going to put two Bible verses here. Talking about God knowing us. Um, all the two verses about God knowing us even before we were born, even before we were here, even before we made a decision. He knew what we were going to do. Psalm 139, verse 1, and Psalm 139, verse 16. And after this Bible study, you can read what, uh, Psalm 139 and it will help you a lot. Just yeah. open. Yeah, thank you. I'll read verse 1. Um, okay, it is the first one. Uh, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay, okay I'll do the second one. Your eyes saw my substance being yet un unformed, and in your book they all were written. The days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. 
wow, so God is omniscient. He knew everything that was going to happen in our lives, in the book of our lives, even in the book of our existence. DNA has information. It's like a book. Your life is like a book. And God knew every single detail of your life. So he knew you. And then because he knew you, the Bible says that he predestined you. That's the second one. I'm going to put it here. That's what the Bible says in, in, in that verse. Mr. D there. But Romans 8 says, For he knew, those who God knew, he also predestined. Predestined to be conformed at the image or to the image of his son. So is God saw every single decision, every single thing that we were going to do. And he said, you know what? There's a heart there. And, 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 and that person is a chosen person, predestined to be formed into the image of Christ, to be in the body of Christ, to be grafted into the very root, into the vine, which is Christ. Romans 8, 29 says that. Uh, I'm going to give you an example about this. Uh, Judges, another example about this. Judges 13. We're going to go to the Old Testament here. Judges 13, verse 6 to 7. See how God knew this man of God and how God predestined him to do something because God knew everything that he was going to do. When you have it, just open your microphone. Judges 13, 6 to 7. And yeah, that's another good verse. Suze, Jeremiah 29, 11. But we're going to focus now on uh, Judges 13, verse 6 to 7. Put it there in your margins. Thank you. Um, I'll read that. Then the woman went to her husband and said, A man of God came to see me. He looked very fearsome, angel of God. I did not ask him where he was from and he did not tell me his name he said to me you will conceive and bear a son so now do not drink wine or strong drink and do not eat anything ritually unclean for the boy will be a Nazarite to God from the womb until the day he died thank you before that man of God was born God knew him. God is omniscient. He knew everything that was going to happen. And then he predestined him for a special task before he was born. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5. Put it in your margins. I'm going to read this one. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5. The Bible says, He predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with with his pleasure and will, he predestined us. That's Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5. But again, this doesn't mean that, and I'm going I'm to talk about that later. It doesn't mean that predestination here is not like that God forced us or that he, he created robots in us. That we don't have the ability, the, the freedom to choose things. Who wants to read Deuteronomy 30, 19? And nobody's forcing me to share this Bible study here today. No, I had the freedom to be here. Is anybody forcing you to read those Bible verses? Do you feel like you're like a robot? Something is pulling you to... No. Predestination doesn't mean that. Predestination in, in this context means that God knew you. He knows everything. He knew every single decision in the past. Even before you were born, he knew everything. Then he placed that destiny for you, ready for you, so that you can be attached to the body of Christ and have all those blessings through Christ. That's predestination here. But you, you're you not a robot. So Deuteronomy 30, 19. Who wants to read that one? Again, from the Old Testament. Deuteronomy, I'll put it here too. Yeah, I've got it. Thank All you, right. VJ. This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you 
that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. Thank you, Vijay. See that powerful passage? That's God speaking and saying, choose, choose. I know what it's going to have. God knows everything, but we don't know everything. We're not God. So our responsibility is to make the good decisions in life. Our responsibility is to choose, to follow, to act upon the promises of God, to walk by faith. Our responsibility is to persevere. Our responsibility is to keep moving forward and to take care of this salvation. Our responsibility is to keep trusting in God and, 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 and in his promises. So God knew you. God predestined you because he saw everything already. So in Ephesians, as we were reading, these this whole passages are saying that we're chosen before the world was created. And he knew us. He predestined us to be in the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. But predestination is not saying from eternity that this person will go to heaven and this other person goes to hell. It's not like God is saying, yeah, that person just goes to hell because I want that person to go to hell. It doesn't work like that. Oh, that person is just going to go. No, predestination says that those who trust in the Lord Jesus Christ are going to be like the Lord Jesus Christ. Predestination says that God sees everything. He is the one that takes those decisions. But in our humanness, in this world, we choose life and we choose to become more like the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, these two things that we see here are from the past. Before you were born, I knew you. I predestined you. That's the past. That's even before we were born. But after we come to this earth, after we are born, we're going to read it again. Romans 8 29 and 30, for those who God foreknew, number one, he knew you. He also predestined, that's number two. Predestined to do what? To be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. That he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, this is number three coming up soon. He called. So this is, this is not before you were born. This is not when you're in, the, in your mother's womb. This is when you're born, he called you. He called you. Do you remember when the Lord Jesus Christ called you? You remember when you heard the voice of the, of the Holy Spirit saying, repent and come to Jesus? I remember that day very clearly. I said, I'm going to open that Bible, dusty Bible in my living room. And I said, people say that this is just a historic book full of stories. Let me open this Bible. And I was 15 or 16 and I opened that book. And when I opened the Bible... The pages of the scripture started just talking and, and ripping up my heart apart. And I started seeing my life in my condition. And Jesus, in red, in red font, all the words of Jesus made me cry there. And I said, what is going on with this? And then I felt God calling me. And I remember that um, I was in a, in a rock band in college. And uh, all my, my friends and I, we, we were recording music. In those days, we were used to recording cassettes. How many of you remember cassettes? Perhaps you, yeah. And you, you used to record in, in cassettes in those days. And we took one of the cassettes to college. And everyone was saying, well, the music is amazing. The song is really cool. But the singer is horrible. Who is the singer? And the singer was me. And as a, as a college student, that really destroyed my confidence and 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 imagine having your your friend saying that you, your voice is horrible imagine people in your college when you're looking for acceptance and things like that and i felt devastated so i went back to my room i went back to my closet my walk-in closet and i took my guitar into that closet and i said god if you're real jesus if you're real i want to give you my life today and with a guitar in my hands i felt that god was calling me to serve him and i said god I'm not going to sing for the world. I'm not going to sing and do things for, for anything else, but I'm going to serve you for the rest of my life. And with a guitar in my hands, without going to a church, without having another Christian next to me, just the Holy Spirit and myself in that room, follow me. 
to guide, guiding me to the to the Lord and to the Father, and God called me there. So the steps that we're seeing here is, are similar in your life and in my life. God knew you before you were born. He knew every single step, and he knew that you were going to have openness to be in a Bible study here in April 2023. And he knew that you had openness in your heart. He knew that you wanted to be close to the vine. So he predestined you. And he prepared a way for you, a purpose. Before you were in the womb, he made you a prophet, a, a pastor. He made you a leader. He made you a church treasurer, someone to serve. He made you a, 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 a Christian that would win all the people for Christ. And then he called you. The Bible says that he called you. This is the moment when he called you and me. When you came to the Lord Jesus Christ, um, we're going to read a passage that perhaps you're not very familiar with it. Jude chapter 1, verse 1. Put it in your margins. Any version will do. Just uh, open your microphone and read it. God called you once you were born. Once you had that encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, he called you. And this is the process in our salvation. Jude chapter 1, verse 1. Who wants to read it? I read it. Thank you. Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who are called, sanctified by God the Father and preserved in, Jane, in Jesus Christ. Underline, thank you, Rami. Underline the word called, sanctified. That's what happened when, when the Lord knew you, when the Lord predestined you, <clears throat> not because you're a robot, but because he knew what was inside of your heart, and then he made the decision to call you. We've been called according to God's sovereign purpose. And the word sovereign, I think as one of you put it in the chat, it means that a king is calling you. Uh, there's, there's a decree from a king. That's what the word sovereign means here. That... A ruler against whom there is no rising up. God has a purpose, has a plan that is seen in that God has called you. And the word called here doesn't mean that I call Rami and I say, hi, Rami, come over here. Come over here to Totteridge. No, the word called here means, means uh, like an official is summoned, is summoned you to be there. An official summons so you see, salvation, it, it, it doesn't depend on you. It began with God. God is the initiator of all this purpose. He melted our, our hearts with his grace, with his love. And if, he, and if it began with you, if this, if this is dependent on you and not in the Lord Jesus Christ, then you can lose that. But because this is God's calling you, he invited you to be there. The Bible says that God is able to finish what he began. So he is the one who called you. Had he had not called us. None of us will, will have the privilege to be here. But we must remember that because of his love. We love him. Because he loved us first. He took the initiative. He loved us first. He loved us first. We love him because he loved us first. And he called us. And we're responding to his love. Through that calling. You remember when. Uh, the Lord called uh, Saul, the Apostle Paul. What do you want me to do, Lord? Who are you, Lord? And then the Lord explained what he was going to do. So after he knew you in eternity, before you were born, after the Lord knew you, he predestined you. And then after that, the Bible says that he called you. He called you. That's number three. Uh, who wants to read John chapter 1, verse 12? And I'm going to put another one there from Romans. I'm going to put another one for Romans because we're going to get into some uh, complex territory here too. Uh, Romans 1, 12, and then Romans 9, 14 to 18. Whenever you have it, just open your, your mic and then... So just to repeat and welcome to those who are joining us. God called you, Romans 8, 29 and 30. He called you. He knew you. He, he, he predestined you. He called you. Two more, two more Bible verses here. 
John 1, 12, and Romans 9, 14 to 18. Okay. Thank you. I'll read um, John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. Thank you. Keep that verse in your margin. It's amazing. See, our response, he, he loved us first, and then as a response, we love him. We hear his calling. We hear his voice calling us. Romans 9, 14 to 18. This is a more difficult one, Romans 9, and I'll tell you why in a minute. I can do that one unless someone else wants to. Go for it, Sue. What then shall we say? Is God unjust? Not at all. For he says, Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. It does not therefore depend on human desire or effort, but on God's mercy. For scripture says Pharaoh, it says to Pharaoh, I raised you up for this very purpose, that I might display my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Therefore, God has mercy on whom he has he wants to have mercy, and he hardens whom he wants to harden. Thank you, Sue. I hope I read the right one. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. So keep that passage to your margins. Now, this is this is the other complicated part because if God chose people like the ones I mentioned to you before, like uh, uh, Samson, for example, if God chose Jeremiah like that, if God chose you and me like that, because he knew us first, as Romans 8 says, remember, number one, Again, so that you can remember, he knew you. Then he predestined you to be conformed to the image of his son. And then after that, he called you. Now, we are here today because he saw in our hearts that desire to say, Lord, I, know, I, know, I no longer live, but Jesus Christ lives in me. I want you to be the Lord of my life. He saw that even before we were born. He saw the openness in your life. Now, do you think everyone is, is having the same attitude in the world? Yes or no? Do you, th do you think everyone has the same openness that you have right now? Yes or no? So this is when it, it gets to the other side then, because nobody can come to us saying, oh, you know what? We're going to pray for the Antichrist, to be, for, for God to give an opportunity to the Antichrist. So the Antichrist may come to church and, and, and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as, as his Lord and Savior. Do you think that's a good prayer to pray? Or do you think that is not according to God's will? Well, God has a lot of Bible verses that talk about what he knew in the past, what he saw in someone that is going to be called the Antichrist. So we, we, we can't have a movement in central London saying, oh, may the Lord bless the Antichrist so the Antichrist may, may come to repentance. No, he's not going to repent. So this is what the Bible is saying in Romans 9, 14, that there's some people that are, are just, he knew that they are predestined for that because he knew what's happening in their hearts. Same with Judas, for example. The, the Lord talks about Judas, right? And he knew him. And in the book of Psalms, is prophesied a lot about Judas. So in the same way that God knew things about Jeremiah, about Samson, about um, us who are in the faith now, he also knows about people that are not going to be saved. And this is the reality. Not everyone is going to be saved. Amen? Oh, uh, and, and people might say, oh, that's not, that, that doesn't sound very loving. It, it, that's a different ballgame. That's a different situation. But remember that some people are not going to be saved. And it's prophesied there in the Bible. You see the Antichrist. You see apostasy. You see many things are happening in the scriptures. And you see those things there. 
and you see where they're going, predestined for that because God knew what was inside of their hearts. God knew that there was no openness there. God knew. And these are the people like Pharaoh, for example, just that's, that's Romans 9, 14 to 18 again, right? God knew that Pharaoh was just going to harden his heart with all the plagues and things. Some people will never repent. Now, we don't know that because we are not God. God is omniscient. He knows everything. And it is our responsibility to show love to everyone, to preach the good news to everyone. And it's up to them if they want to open their hearts and receive it. Just like the, the, parable, the parable of the sower. You remember sowing and scattering the seed? Nothing wrong with the sower, nothing wrong with the seed. But the problem was with the soil. But the soil in other people's lives is not your responsibility. As a pastor, we just scatter the seed. As a Christian, you invite others to come to Jesus. Some people will say yes. Some people will say no. And this is what Romans 9 is showing us here. So remember the steps. He knew you. He predestined you. He called you. And then after he called you, the Bible says that there's another step. Justification. Read it in Romans chapter 8, verse 29. Those he called, he also justified. So put it as number, what number are we? Four? Put it here. So someone, someone, uh, someone sent a message saying, I wonder then about the scripture when Jesus said that he came, that all will be saved, all will be saved, and none will perish. Oh, but this, uh, this, this, uh, this question is all who came to Jesus, but not all will come to Jesus, right? So if you come to Jesus, you are saved. If you come and, s and connect to the vine and stay close to the vine, and you are the branch, you will be saved. So that question is this uh, um, spontaneous question here that says, I wonder about the scripture when Jesus said that he came, that all will be saved, that this all means the sheep of his pastures. Amen. The ones who are part of the body, the ones who are grafted into him as the vine. So the opportunity was open for us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, but not all the world accepted the gift, right? So if I give you a gift, if God has offered a gift, you have to receive it. You have to say yes to that gift. And some people, as we said, they, they will say no. And the Bible is full of examples of that. And the Bible says that some people will not be saved. That's just what the Bible says. So thanks be to God that he has given us the opportunity. And we are going to preach the gospel and help people. We don't know what God knows, but we're just going to keep trusting and, and, and pouring out love. So justification, Romans chapter 5, verse 1. I'm going to read that one. I'll read it to make it quicker here. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Justification comes through faith. And because of that, we have peace with God. What does it mean to be justified? It means that you are declared righteous. Righteous. Yeah, so it's uh, another spontaneous question here. So does this link with free will, as I said to you? It, it is. It is a connection there. God knows, the, the, the difference is that because God knows everything, he, he can make decisions in a different way. But um, to the person that asked this question, I mean, you had the freedom to put that question in there in the chat, right? Nobody forced you. So yes, there is some level of, of free will from our earthly, from our earthly uh, point of view. From our humanness, we have choices. That's when God says, that's why I gave you Deuteronomy. Remember that passage of Deuteronomy where God says, Choose the life. I think VJ was the one who read that one. I can't remember which one it was. But uh, 
But God said to the people of Israel, choose life. You have in front of you the decision. You have the free, <laughs> the free choice, right? Choose life, God said in Deuteronomy. I can't remember which passage was, but um, I can give it to you afterwards. But yeah, it is connected with free will. Nobody is forcing us to paste these questions there. Nobody is forcing us to ask these questions. Deuteronomy 30, 19. Thank you, Laura. So it is connected. From our perspective, we have choice and we can decide. From God's perspective, he knows everything. That's a completely different matter. And nobody can understand how God works. Uh, so justification. What does it mean to be justified? It means to be declared righteous. In front of God, you are righteous now that you have received the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You have peace with God. You are accepted. You are justified. Justification is not being good through your own good. When you put your faith where God put your sins on the Lord Jesus Christ, then God stamps righteousness over your name and in his book of light. It's right standing with God, as you're saying. You are justified in God's sight, not because of what you have done or can ever do, but just because you said, Jesus, I want to rely on you. So the center of all this is not our own deeds, our predestination, not even our free will. I mean, it's Jesus. We put everything in Jesus. Jesus is the center of everything that we're talking about here. The, the main purpose, the main um, subject in the Bible is not predestination or, or this and that. The, the main subject in the Bible, the main name, the most important name is Jesus. Jesus is the reason why we are justified. He is the way, the truth, and life. And because of him, we are justified with God. When we said, Jesus, I want to trust in you. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I'm going to read this one, but I'm going to paste it here. 2 Corinthians. Difficult question, I told you. but Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Our works do not earn our salvation, but our works reflect our belief and uh, please remember this so um, our works reflect our belief So you will not be able to earn your salvation with your own words. It's only through Jesus Christ and putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the way. But once you receive him, you will have a lifestyle. There will be a change in your life. There will be evidence, fruit in your life. And you will live that Christian life that God wants you to live. Unless if you are, as Rami posted today on Facebook, unless if you're the thief next to the cross. He was a dying thief, right? And through his faith at that last moment, he came into heaven. He never heard a sermon, a Bible study like this, perhaps. I don't know. But he had faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ led him into heaven. But you are not that thief. You are not a thief. You are a Christian that's going to live a victorious life here on earth. Amen. And you're going to do the Father's will on earth as it is in heaven. So do your best with your faith. You've been justified. And because you've been justified, because you are righteous now, you're going to practice that righteousness with works that will reflect your belief. And after that, we finish our lives. And the Bible talks about glorification. And this is in Romans again. So this is the last. Um, and having called them, he gave them the right standing with himself. Let me see another another translation here. And the ones who he also justified, he also glorified. So put that one as number five in, in your study there. Hopefully this um, will help you to see the whole, the whole process here. He also glorified. So this is, we follow Jesus Christ. We live a life that is glorifying his name. And we are living by faith here on earth, obeying the Father and doing His will. 
preaching the gospel, serving him until our last breath. And the Bible talks about us being glorified with him. So when we enter it into when, when we enter into that eternal life, when we come into that resurrection, when we when we come with that new, when we experience that new body, that new creation at the image of the Son, when we are sure of our justification, then finally comes our eternal glorification. Whom he called, this also he justified, and whom he justified, he also glorified. So the basis of our justification, as we said, is the blood of Jesus Christ. It becomes effective when we trust in him. And as a result, God no longer deals with us as separated, as sinners, but as his children. And God already sees us in heaven, in his heart and mind. He already sees us settled and glorified there. He knew us before, and he knew that we were going to be glorified because of that process that we just went through right now. And and what has been settled in heaven, and this can give you an assurance, what has been settled in heaven cannot be annulled or undone in time. Jesus said, I don't know if you remember this. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. If you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, you will never perish. You're eternal and you will spend eternity in heaven with him. You'll be glorified, the Bible says. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. You, you, you will never be lost. If you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, you can't be lost. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand, of my hands. And I think Manju read this passage that says, no, no demons, no tribulations, no nothing can separate us from the love of, of God that is in Christ Jesus. So this gives us a security in our salvation. Who wants to read Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6? We nearly finished. Very complex question, but hey, hopefully this is all helping you. Ephesians 2, 6 now. This is how God sees us. Who wants to read Ephesians 2, verse 6? Those who belong to him, those who receive him as their Lord and Savior. Look what the Lord says about them. And he raised us up and seated us up. Awesome. Can you read that again, Vicky, please? I think we, we lost you there for a second. Yeah, it's raining in Opshot, so the internet goes out. Yeah. Um, and he raised us up and seated us together in heavenly places in Messiah Jesus. Oh, wow. That should give us the security and the assurance that if he knew you, if he called you, if he predestined you, if you belong to him, if he justified you, he will glorify you. In fact, you are glorified already and seated in high, in heavenly places with not because of your works, not because of you, not because of the best choices that you made, just because you said yes to Jesus and Jesus chose you and gave you that opportunity for his grace. So Ephesians 2, 6. And then um, I think... Um, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 11 to finish. I'll, I'll, I'll read this one. Glorified with him and both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are the same family. So the Lord calls us his family. So Jesus, the Bible says in Hebrews 2, 11, is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. That's glorification right there. So as a conclusion, we in Romans chapter 8, verse 29 and 30, we see past, present, and future of our existence, of everything we are, of everyone's life there. We see past, present, and future. The Bible says... 
For those who God foreknew, that's the past. He also predestined, that's in the past. But then when you are born, the Bible says that he called you. He justified you, that's present. He called you and he justified you. And then future glorified. Your eternity is secure in Jesus Christ. When you are in Christ, all things are new. You have eternal life and nobody can get you out of there. Nobody will be able to pluck you out of his hands. If you belong to Jesus, then nobody can get you out of there. You cannot be lost if you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, how do you know that you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, that's a different Bible study. Uh, well, you know that because of the Bible, what the Bible says, for I am persuaded that neither death or life or angels, principalities, nor powers, no death, no created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a promise right there. So you know that you belong to Jesus Christ because you place your assurance in him and you know that his promises are yes and amen. You know that you are saved and you know that you've been in, 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 in how do we call this? grafted into the vine because you're persevering that's a good sign that you are a saved person because the, the god that began a good work in you will complete it so when you see that you're persevering in your faith the holy spirit has never started anything that he's not going to be able to finish god is going to finish what he started in your life so perseverance when you persevere in your christian life that's a good sign that you are saved predestination as we say god saw you your salvation did not begin with you. He gave you that opportunity. He is the initiator of mission. And he is the one that loved us first. And that's why we love him as a response. Uh, our position is another good reminder that we are uh, secure in Christ. Security is not a place. Security is a person. And the, the, that person is the, the Lord Jesus Christ. When you are positioned, the Bible says, grafted in the vine. When we are positioned with the Lord Jesus Christ, part of his body, sealed with the Holy Spirit, nobody can get you out of there. You are saved, sealed for eternity. You are God's possession. When you see that you're living a prayer life, Jesus, I mean, Jesus prayed for us. Um, not that we will escape problems and tribulations, but that he will be keeping us from all evil. That's what the Lord prayed and, and his power. I mean, we are kept for all of eternity because of the power of God. And this alone is enough proof that we are eternally secure. So I want you to go out of this Bible study today saying, I am secure in Jesus Christ. I am secure. My salvation is secure in the Lord Jesus Christ. He loved me first and I love him. He saw me. And just like Jeremiah, he said, I, I saw you even before you were born. And I had a purpose for you, the Lord says, and that purpose, I will fulfill it in your life.